stuff. But um, I, know, I want to go through this real quick. The uh, DRM. I might attach this to another video that we did. Um, mm. But yes, yeah, so I wanted to know your guys' thoughts because I know Caleb has a problem with it, and I, I have a problem with it as well. I think DRM is bullshit. Um, where they restrict you to one device so that you won't just pass it around to everyone that you know. Um, it's like it's like preventing piracy, but the way they're doing it is just dumb. It's just stupid. So you're stuck with one device. So if you've got a, a Nook and a Kindle, you can't exchange between them. So um, how do you guys feel about that? Stupid. I, yeah. I, I see what... Uh, this is the thing. I know, like... Amazon, for example, they have the lending library now, right? So, and, and if you buy something from Amazon, obviously you can download it. To, it's in your account and you can put it on your different devices and things like that. So that's an example where I think they've, they've addressed the idea that if you give people the ability to share or the ability to, to, you know, freely use whatever it is they buy, then there's going to be less restrictions and less piracy, I would think. So Amazon in that mm-hmm. case, I think has done it well, but when you look at other formats or other book mm-hmm. devices and stuff they don't necessarily do it i think drm it's it's arbitrary restriction for sure i mean it's yeah it doesn't make any sense it's it's the same thing with music they try to do it with music and and it it, it doesn't succeed it just causes a bunch of it un- doesn't work unnecessary lawsuits <laughs> yeah it, it the only thing it does is it piss pe- it pisses people off to the point where they don't even want to buy it in the first place they just want to pirate it, it as a feeling of I, i'm going to get back at the system because they're always screwing me over. They're just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Amen. No, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. It's um, <laughs> just a stupid concept, and they're just trying to scrape together their uh, their old businesses. And it's just like we can't let this happen because it's going to ruin us. But that's just bullshit. They're not adapting. They're just trying to struggle to hold on to it. It's going to happen anyway. That's uh, it's stupid. Uh-huh. It's yeah. dumb. Like, as if nobody can find a way to get around it. Like, I don't know. Exactly. It just makes things a pain in the ass, and then you get. Aggravated. Yep. So this one is 75% of 16 to 29 year olds still read printed books. I actually found this pretty surprising. Like, I honestly thought a lot of more people were going to ebooks. Apparently not. Um, and people read more ebooks on phones, tablets, and computers than e-readers. Um, is it because people just don't want to pay for an e-reader uh, as like a dedicated hardware instead of pay, you know using their phone or whatever just to do it easy? So thoughts. Also, the fact that it's it's got a um, like, oops, sorry. Um, I had a conversation with somebody a while ago that they said like because of the fact that it does have like a light on it, you can read in the dark, you can read it while you're going to sleep or whatever. Like that's a big reason why, and you can read on the bus. You don't have to like carry like it, you know devices aren't that big, but you know with your phone or your iPad, you're usually gonna have that anyways with you or whatever. So it's just kind of convenience over. Oh, I don't want to buy just another device, you know. Mm. <clears throat> well, the new uh, Kindle Paperwhites can do that. They have the backlit thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get one pretty soon. Um, so, I mean, that kind of solves the issue, but I think it's to do with the fact that it's all convenience. It's all convenience. It's like they've got their books on their phone. They yep. can just switch from emails to books easy. Um, and also, you can you can use that new, um, uh, what should we call it, that audio book system they've got now, the... Um, yeah, audio, it's it's specific. Yeah. that's one um, so you can use that with your phones and it's like really easy to go back and forth but with a Kindle you have to use your phone to listen to it and then go back to the Kindle which doesn't make any sense so um, I yeah convenience I, I don't know if anyone else would contest that I th- um, you, well one thing to keep in mind one thing to point out in the story too is that it, based off the title I haven't read the, read the full article but based on the title it's that 75% of 16 to 29 year olds still read a print book in the last year. So it doesn't mean they're only reading print books. It's just mean they've read a print book. So they probably still, mm-hmm. they probably do ebooks and I, I do both. You know, I'll have, I do, depending on where I am, I definitely still do both. Um, so that, yeah, that, it was saying, uh, I had like, uh, percentages for people who read ebooks and apparently it's like really low. It's like 20% or something. Um, so I mean, it's clearly, it's, it's almost on the same kind of, Ratio. The thing, the thing I noticed, which kind of disappointed me, uh, I, I was first really excited about the title of the story, and I can't remember if it was in the Galley Cat version of the story or if I read it in another person's publication. 
Um, I think it's slightly misleading because I believe they also included um, when they asked kids if they had read a printed book, if at any time, like, say, they had a project that they had to research for their sixth grade uh, class two-page essay, um, if they went down to the library and used a book there, that was considered reading a printed book, which kind of skews everything. And that kind of made me sad because at first I was pumped, and then I was kind of like, oh, I, that's what I believe I read out of it. So. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, but do you have any theories on why people read ebooks more than paper? Oh, sorry, no, the other way around. Why people read paperback more than ebooks? Is it just because it's still in that early transition period, or is it another reason? Yeah, it's. I think that's entirely it. Uh, it any sort of cultural change takes a generation, they say, and we mm-hmm. are in the first generation of ebooks. So, you know, my kids, for example, when they'll, I'm sure, not even, not really pay much attention to print books though the print industry is so such a large industry that it might take more than just one generation but i think that's entirely it it's just yeah. we're still in a transition period honestly mm-hmm. i don't know i kind of look at books as being like the one form of entertainment we have left that isn't electronic and uh i think they'll they'll there will always be something for the people that use it as an escape from Every, every every single other form of entertainment from TV, movies, uh, computer, internet, video games, whatever, is all connected to the internet. And uh, e-readers now are also connected to Wi-Fi. And this is the big thing that turns me off from like the Kindle Fire, especially, um, is is the whole connectedness. And sometimes you just get really, uh, I don't know, anxiety ridden about all that internet connectivity all the time. And the paper book is like the one last escape. And I don't think it'll ever go away and i think that's why it's still really popular is people still kind of look at it as sort of like the uh the the vacation without having to leave sort of thing you know it's not attached to your computer in any way good point um so yeah with i think we were talking about this earlier with the um e-readers bundled with books in the library so you could buy an e-reader and it comes bundled with a lot of books um is that a good idea or is it kind of stupid because you can just buy the e-reader directly from the manufacturer because i mean honestly like when i read that i I thought it was i thought it was kind of cool but i don't know who would do it because if you've already got an e-reader and there's no point getting another one um yeah it's it's i don't know what books are they like are they like classics or i have no idea no i would assume assume classics I've seen some that are like, well, especially for me, since I buy a lot of young adult, and so Barnes and Noble is like, hey, upgrade your Nook and get this, all these Hunger Games, the whole Hunger Games series, and so like that's what I see. But it's just like, yeah, it's just to get you to upgrade and to see, oh yeah, you can get this, you know, tablet or whatever. And I'm just like, I'd rather, like, like um, uh, Dean said, like I, I don't want to be on the internet when I'm reading. It's just totally distracting and to be. Like, I will read on my e-reader just because it, I don't, it's Wi-Fi and that's it. Like, it doesn't get any sort of notifications that that's, and I use it for e-galleys and that's mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just like, I'd rather just be, yeah. You know, yeah, I do like um, e-readers more than regular books, but that's only the e-readers themselves. I don't like reading on tablets or phones or anything. I don't do it. So I just think it's dumb. It's, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. It's like, you've got a device that is like, for quick entertainment and for quick stuff like emails and mm. you, you can't read and have emails pop up you can't do that it doesn't work so with kindles it works because it's just for books that's the only thing you got it for and it kind of emulates the printed page because it prints with the ink system so that works for me um i was, I was just thought of something else you can't get an ebook signed <laughs> like you could but if you went to uh, a book signing to any book signing and ask um, an author to sign your e-reader, I'm pretty sure, not that they would throw things at you, but they'd be like, uh, no. Like, they would probably be nice enough about it, but, like, when you go to a book signing, they, you know, prefer that you buy a book that is a physical book for them to sign because that is their baby. A lot of author events, that's the ticket, is you have to buy a book to get it. Like, when you buy the Mm -hmm. ticket, they... A lot of them. I have seen something where... you're supporting indie bookstores. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of indie bookstores, they have the author readings, and, and the bigger ones have some author readings, but also the bigger ones, like Barnes & Noble, they have an e-reader as well, so they probably are okay with you as long as you, you know, as long as it's a, a nook or whatever, so they probably are a little bit different in that sense. Um, 
there is something called a this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's called the Kindle Graph, and it is a system that allows authors to actually sign Kindle versions of your book, and it just stores their signature like a digital file. It's the dumbest thing. Ever. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. It just takes Why away the just, whole like, magic of uh, the point of a signature yeah. is to have proof that there was that there was the author's yeah. hand on it. It was touched, you know. It yeah, just give them a piece of paper and have them sign that. I mean, that's just the same <laughs> thing. Much, yeah. You could just like stick it on your Kindle, whatever you don't. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Stop. Okay. I just like having all the books. 